What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. Today I've got another deck profile for you guys. I'm doing my take on Masked Heroes. This is going to be called Heroes of Atlantis. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this deck profile. So first we're going to go ahead and get started with the monsters. First up we're running three copies of Elemental Hero Ice Edge. This is a fun little card I decided to choose to be one of the main heroes of this deck. So what this guy does is you discard one card in order to attack directly with this guy. And whenever he does battle damage, you can target one set spell or trap your opponent controls, and you can destroy it. So this guy, he tutors everything in this deck. I can send other cards that I'll get to later. I can send my Shadow Mist so I can get my searches off. And on top of that, he's a real pain for the opponent because he acts kind of like the way Lila does in the instance that if you don't waste your back row on this guy, then you're just going to lose it anyway. So it really puts pressure on your opponent to use up their back row before they use it on like your really big plays. Then next up, we're running three copies of Shadow Mist. That's pretty much a given. Um, and he's sent to the graveyard, you get to add a hero. When he special summon, you add a mass change quick play spell from your deck to your hand. Pretty simple. For other heroes, we're running one copy of Elemental Hero Wildheart. He cannot be affected by traps. The reason why I run him is just so I can go straight into Diane if I want to. Then we have one copy of Elemental Hero uh, Neos Alias, so we can go for Koga. And then we run one copy of Bubble Man for Exceed Plays. I know most hero builds, they run like three Bubble Man, Bubble Man's a mess, blah de blah de blah de blah. I don't really care about Bubble Man all that much. I only need one to go for Exceed Plays. And because I don't run that low of a monster town, he's better off just, you know. I'd rather not have multiple copies in my hand. And that does for all the hero stuff. Other support, we have top two copies of Summoner, Summoner Monk. We have a bunch of spells that we run, so we can toss them in order to get out our Shadow Mist and get extra mass change uh, quick play spells. And then the Atlantis part of this deck, we are running the Atlantean engine in the form of two heavy infantry and two copies of Marksman. So like I said before with Ice Edge, Ice Edge can trigger all the Atlanteans, he can trigger Shadow Mist, so you get mm, more pluses off of it. You get to pop a back row off Ice Edge's effect, you can pop a back row or you can set on a Marksman, or you can pop face up problematic cards in with uh, heavy infantry. So it's it's a lot of fun to use these guys. And then we run one copy of King of the Swamp so I can search polymerization because sometimes I just want to go straight for my Ad Zero Fusion. Because this is essentially like a 2.0 version of the Ad Zero deck that I took to one of my regionals that was in Charlotte a while ago. So running one copy of him so I can get right to my Polymer. And that does it for all of the monsters. For spells, we're running three copies of Ecall so I can search out whatever heroes that I need. Running three copies of Miracle Fusion so we can go for those big plays and just so I have spare ones. Three copies of Mass Chain because this is Mass Hero. One copy of Mass Chain Second just for other monsters and just so I can have more, you know, change spells available to me. And then we're running one copy of Form Change. I actually really like Form Change. Being able to go into any of the any of the other Mass Heroes, or if you have Abzer on the field, you can change into Diane or you can change into. Um, uh, acid off of off of the um, Ab Zero, and then Ab Zero still moves the field anyway. So, or your opponent's side of the field anyway. So, it's really great. Then we've got two copies of Mass Charge. It's our salvage for heroes. One copy of Polymerization, so that I can go straight into Ab Zero if I want to. Then we have one copy of Reinforcement of the Army, just for extra consistency. One copy of Salvage. Since we are running the Atlantean Engine, sometimes I might want to get those Atlanteans back. So we're running one copy of Salvage. Then we run one copy of Foolish Burial, just so we can go ahead and send our um, Shadow Mist to the Grave, get our search on, more consistency, all that fun stuff. So that does it for all the spells. Next up we have traps, kind of a small trap lineup. We have one copy of Soul in the Morning, two copies of Deep Prison, two copies of Call of the Haunted, so we can use our Shadow Mist, and then we run two copies of Andy Benson, because this card kind of defines the game right now. Until it gets hit and or banned, everyone's gonna run two three copies. So, and this behind Dark Claw in the right setting is actually pretty good. So, that does the main deck. Move on to the extra deck. Starting off with running one copy of Contrast Hero Chaos. This is a monster you will never see in a lot of hero builds. I like it though. It's Spell Grand Knight the Fusion, and I can fuse off of it using Miracle Fusion. So that by default makes it a good card to me. Then we run two copies of Mass Hero Acid, since this is Heroes of, uh, Heroes of Atlantis. We're doing primarily water with this, 
So we have our Heavy Storm guy right here, or Feather Duster, whichever you prefer. Two copies of the main man himself, Dark Law. He is a Macrocosmos in a 2400 body, and he is also Anti-Search, which is great. Then we have one copy of Master Hero Diane. I really like him. He's got great stats, 28 over 3k. And on top of that, whenever he runs over something, you special summon out one of your elemental heroes. From your deck straight to the field, that is once level 4 or lower, so go straight for those Shadow Nets and get your search off with that. Then we run one copy of Vapor to drive the target to form game. The fact that he can't destroy by card effects is still pretty good on top of being control is so cool. Then we have Koga, the battle phase controller itself, one copy of him. That's why we run the alias. Then for regular heroes, we run two copies of Half Zero, having a Raigeki. Whenever it leaves the field, it's always fine. Then we run one copy of Shining. I also wanted to run one copy of Escarado, but I currently don't have one, so um, I'll have to, you know, try and find one. Maybe I'll make space for some now. Then moving into the Exceed, we have one copy of Heroic Champion Excalibur. We're running a bunch of warriors in here, and sometimes we need a little muscle. Next time night for mass removal, I might change this out to be that I already have that zero and plenty of ways to do the field. And then we run one copy of this one. Because we have Bubble Man, all of my water monsters with that extra 500 is really nice. And 2200 feeder that says that you can't activate card effects in the graveyard is a lot more daunting than one with 17. That does for the extra deck. So guys, that was the Heroes of Atlantis. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. And stay tuned for future videos. This is Parker Lad 